real life here. I, gotta, I just got off of work. And my lipstick is completely gone. And I want to film this review video and get it up for you guys. And I am too lazy to touch up my makeup. So this is all you're getting from me is lipstick. And my Kat Von D liquid lipstick got everywhere today. Which is super embarrassing. But you guys, this ColourPop lipstick, they're Luxe Lips. I have the shade Lala. I only bought one. Because I'm not a huge bullet lipstick girl. And this formula is really good. Oh, I've heard it doesn't last the longest. But um, I think it's super moisturizing, so if you're looking for a hidden gem, ColourPop, and this packaging is so adorable. Anyways, this is not what we're here for, so let's get into the video, girlfriend. Hope you guys are ready. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today you're gonna get a awesome two-in-one experience. I figured that both of these palettes are pretty new to my collection and I wanted to review them for you guys because I know a lot of you in particular are dying to see my thoughts on the Papagrat Labs mini palette and of course the NARS palette. I can't believe so many of you watched that video where I was out of focus doing swatches of this palette. That was such a YouTuber fail moment for me, but I think I was just so like exhausted that day editing it and I was like, fuck it, it's just a swatch video, I'm gonna post it. You can still see the swatches and thank you so much for watching that video guys. You really didn't have to, but it totally made my day. I promise not to do that again. Um, I batch film, so what that basically means is I'll sit down and film a bunch of different videos if I ever get the chance. It's really the best way for me to get stuff done and then I just edit during the week. So I have a bunch of footage and then I just edit during the week. Some people just sit down and film one video at a time. It really is just depending on your preference, but usually I know to focus my camera before I start filming and I must have been like in some kind of daze because I did not do that with this NAR swatch video. So anyway, if you guys want to see it, I will definitely remember to link it. And I'm going to review the NARS one first because I have a few more things to go over with the Pat McGrath one. So I have notes on my phone in case you guys are wondering why I'm looking down. I'm not going to commit any of this to memory. So, so of course, like I said, this palette is by NARS. This is one of their newest cheek palettes. Now, I have fallen in love very recently with NARS palettes. I bought one a long, long time ago, and it's in one of my like regret videos, like palettes I regret buying videos, where I bought a palette from NARS, which was a limited edition palette that they released during the Nordstrom anniversary sale. And I've loved NARS for a really long time. Urban Decay was my first high-end brand, and NARS was my second. I'm really sad they're no longer cruelty-free, but I haven't found a solid replacement for the NARS Sheer Glow. And so I still purchase from them because I love their products. If you guys hear dogs, I'm sorry. They're like playing right now. And uh, my dogs are savages when it comes to their squeaky toys. So I'm really, really sorry about that. But anyway, huge fan of NARS. Saw that they were launching two of these palettes. So these are called the Narcissist Wanted palettes. And they have different ones that they've released before with very similar shades. I don't own those. So I don't know if they're exactly the same but these ones just spoke to me on a spiritual level and so I picked them up. I do believe these are Ulta exclusives. I haven't seen them anywhere else but like I mentioned they have other cheek palettes that look very similar. So there's a Wanted 1 and a Wanted 2. I went for the Wanted 2 because let's be real I'm like a huge sucker for like very toned shades. So even though I feel like I'm a little bit too light for these colors. I thought I could wear them shared out, which is why I decided to pick up this one. Like I said, love NARS for a very, very long time. And this product is, I believe, limited edition. It retails for $59, but they claim it has $146 value. Now, I got this for free shipping because I think... If you spend over $50 at Ulta, you do get free shipping. My one like gripe with Ulta is their shipping is so slow. I wish they had something like flash shipping that Sephora does. If I want something fast, I usually shop at Sephora, even though I do love Ulta's point system. So that's something to keep in mind, but I don't think this is going to be sold at Sephora. So that is, you know, what you're left with. 
I don't believe there's any like promo codes on this right now, but if you wait for a 20% off coupon from Ulta, you should be able to get this at a discount. I do love the packaging. Of course, NARS is always killing it with the packaging. I do have the box here as well. As you can see, they're, you know, similar. So it's that similar packaging to the wanted eyeshadow palette. The back is silver. It's nice and like a hard plastic with a nice mirror. And then there's you know six huge pans so they're big enough for you to dip your brush in and things like that so very very lovely packaging I do believe this palette is made in Canada I don't really know anything about products made in Canada but that's just something I wanted to mention to you guys and then the total amount of product is 0 0.78 ounces now as far as shade selection and finishes go as you can see there are six different shades in this palette and so I'm just going to read to you guys and I feel so lame because I was swatching this and I was like PYT I don't know what that means and somebody left me a comment saying pretty young thing and I was like damn I feel old because it didn't even click that PYT was pretty young thing even though we all know that song. I want to love you pretty young thing I need some loving. Did you guys like my singing? Okay so PYT is a metallic rose and then we have ambition which is a satin tangerine and both of those shades are limited edition then they have Taos which is a soft red with gold sheen which is this color and that one I believe is in the NARS permanent line and then the bottom three are Expose which is a matte dusty rose Penthouse which is a matte raspberry and Queen which is a matte ruby and those three are all limited edition shades so these shades, you guys, I can't tell you enough. Totally my kind of shades. I love wearing berries, especially in the fall time. I think it's just so flattering with my skin tone. So that is incredibly yummy. I love the shades that they chose in this particular palette. Now, I definitely feel like this palette is made for dark skin tones. I think that if you want this palette, you really want to be very, very careful. If you watch my swatch party video, I think I went in pretty light-handed and it was crazy like it was so pigmented and even today this is after a full day of work you can still see my blush and I went in so light with this palette because I knew how pigmented it was and it's still like uber uber pigmented so that's definitely something I want to mention I don't think that's a drawback I just think that it's made for deeper skin tone so I do want to mention that I don't think if you are like a porcelain princess, you're going to enjoy this palette. I think you would want to stick with the Wanted One palette. As far as shelf life goes, this does have a 24 month shelf life, so that's nice. You can use it over a two year lifespan. Now, I don't know if you're going to get through it in two years, but I usually don't have a problem with my powder products. They usually tend to last a little bit longer than that. I did order this on March 8th and it was delivered to me on March 14th. Again, like I said, I do wish Ulta had a faster shipping option that I didn't have to pay for. Like I wish they would work on that. Um, as far as vegan and cruelty free, I don't think this is vegan. It's definitely not cruelty free. I think they went not cruelty free last year and a lot of people are really upset about it. Just want to mention it to you guys in case you were interested in this palette. Okay, so as far as wear time, like I said, I've had this makeup on for easily eight hours. It is 6.38 when I'm filming this and I got ready at about 7.30 this morning. So I've been wearing it for a long time. And as you can tell, it's definitely lasted the whole day. I haven't done any touch-ups. I wanted you guys to see it you know, after I'd worn it a whole day. I'm also gonna pop up a picture of what my makeup looked like this morning because I posted a photo on Instagram. Shameless plug to my Instagram account. Now the million dollar question, would I recommend this? I wrote myself a note saying, heck yes, I would recommend this. The only thing I would caution you is there are two palettes. There's a Wanted 1 and a Wanted 2. The Wanted 1 is for lighter skin tones. Wanted 2 is for deeper skin tones. My only problem, it's not really a problem. I guess what I wish they had done is also made one for medium skin tones because I do feel like this is a, a little bit too pigmented for my skin tone. I don't think that's a drawback 
in general, it's just a drawback for me because I don't think this product is right for my skin tone. Now, I'm not going to be mad at NARS about it because to be completely honest, I do think people with darker skin tones than me are very neglected by a lot of the bigger brands. So I honestly applaud NARS. People deserve the option of being able to try the NARS formula and I genuinely love that they did two palettes. If they did three, even better. I think a lot of brands could do something like this. Have you guys seen that new Smashbox like contour palette? I'm gonna throw up a picture so you guys can see it. Like, who is this gonna work for? It's so unfair. So I think it's nice when brands break it up and do a light and a deep because it's gonna give more people access to product because we all know makeup isn't one size fits all. So it's nice, at least if they're gonna do a face palette, if they give you some options. I could probably mix this palette with other blush shades and make it work. It's just that it's very, very pigmented, that's all. And today on my face, I'm actually wearing this shade, which is Taos, I believe. Yeah, it's Taos. And it's such a beautiful shade, and I can't believe it lasted so long. I just... I'm not saying it should be less pigmented, I just wish there were similar shades, just a little bit lighter for my skin tone. But I... I'm telling you guys, if you have deep skin, if you are a chocolate girl, if you are like Eastern Asian but a darker complexion, you guys are going to freaking love this palette. I think it's so beautiful and I'm so glad I picked this up and I'm so glad that NARS did something for different varieties of skin tones. Now I don't know much about the lighter palette. I ordered this online so I wasn't able to see it in person. At the time I was doing research on this palette for my review, I only saw one review on the palettes that had um, that was from a person that had bought both and she said she returned both of them. She said they were really chalky. I didn't have a problem with it being chalky or anything like that. As you guys can see in my swatch video, uber uber pigmented, not chalky at all. Trust me, I've dealt with chalky and shitty NARS palettes where there's no pigmentation and this is not one of them. So I urge you guys, if you're interested in this, definitely pick it up. Support NARS because I think they did a good thing coming out with something like this for deeper skin tones. Okay guys, now moving on to the palette I'm sure you guys have all been waiting to hear my thoughts on. Now I do want to give a quick disclaimer on this palette, you guys. These are just my opinions. If you don't agree with me, that is totally fine. If you picked up this palette and you are obsessed with it, that is so great. I'm so freaking happy for you. But that was not my experience, so I'm just going to give you my opinion. If you have like amazing, awesome makeup skills and this palette looks amazing for you, I couldn't be happier because you guys, Pat McGrath is a girl boss. I love her. This palette in no way influences my opinion on the brand. I still think it's a wonderful brand. I still love her other palettes. This is just my opinion. So if you still want to buy this, go ahead and buy it. I'm just telling you guys what I think. So let's not get our panties in a bunch okay so disclaimer is made so i just want to give you guys a little bit of information obviously the brand is pat mcgrath labs and they came out with three of these i only picked up the one because let's be real i literally have more warm eyeshadow palettes than i know what to do with and i didn't think i was gonna wear either of the other shades so i just picked this one up and this is this has a long name so i'm gonna try and not butcher it but it's called the mothership subversive La Vienne Rose Eyeshadow Palette. <laughs> Woo! That actually sounded like I knew what I was saying. Obviously, I would still categorize this as a high-end palette. You're getting six shades for $55, so I would say that's high-end. And this is by the brand Pat McGrath. Now, if you don't know who Pat McGrath is, she is probably one of the most famous makeup artists, living or dead, I would say. And she works runways, she does film, she does magazines, like she's very, very, very in and with it and is a working makeup artist, so I think it's really cool that she has her own brand. I would say they're relatively new. I think Pat McGrath kind of made it on the scene maybe last year or the year before. I hadn't purchased anything from her until last year when I bought the eyeshadow palettes because I wasn't really into like all of her 
eyeshadow sets and stuff and they were so pricey so this is really like an investment when you get into collecting Pat McGrath because it is pricey but you definitely fall in love with it and I have purchased from her before like I said I will link some videos of me trying out her eyeshadow palettes as well as her liquid lipsticks love love Pat McGrath <laughs> can't say enough good things about that as far as where to get Pat McGrath I would honestly recommend shopping on the Sephora website. What I have realized is Pat McGrath's shipping is a little bit slow. Usually it'll launch on Pat McGrath's website first and then it'll launch on Sephora the next day. For example, these palettes launched on 3.7 on Pat McGrath's website and then on 3.8 it was on Sephora.com. I am a Rouge member so I get two day flash shipping so I for sure got these palettes faster than if I would have ordered from the Pat McGrath website. So now I've decided to stick to ordering from the Sephora website, even though it means I have to wait a whole 24 hours before I can order, but I still get my palettes faster. So that's something I do want to mention to you guys if you are thinking about picking up these palettes. Okay, and this palette is limited edition. I don't know what the status is on any of our palettes, if they're all limited edition, if she'll continue to carry them, who knows. Um, what the future holds. I feel like Pat McGrath is one of those brands that is kind of pumping out some products like especially for 2018 I feel like we've already gotten the fourth big mothership palette. She's gotten some new colors launching. She launched a new eyeliner. She launched the lip balm. So she's doing some work y'all. Now just to go over the cost again. 55 bucks free shipping on Sephora as well as Pat McGrath Labs. Again, I just think Sephora is faster. Also, the VIB sale's coming up soon, so if you've been eyeing one of these, I highly recommend just waiting. As far as the packaging goes, now a lot of people are really into this packaging because it's colorful. I totally get it. And most people do think that the original, these big palettes, look just like plastic, but honestly, if you pick one of these up, you'll know why you're paying the price you're paying because it is insanely heavy. It just feels like luxury in your hand. Whereas this one feels like you're kind of holding a ColourPop palette. No shade to ColourPop, no shade to Pat McGrath Labs. I think it's a cool concept. I'm glad she didn't do the exact same packaging. So the larger boxes from these guys, it's the same cover. It's just shrunk into a cardboard packaging, but I don't know, there's a lot of information where these are different, so I'm going to go over all of that with you, which is why I have the big palette, and I also made notes. So yeah, that's a little bit about the packaging. I'm not too jazzed about it, but whatever. Now, as far as these palettes, I did do some research. Um, this one is made in the USA, and this one is made in Italy. Now, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this because I'm not the goddess of makeup, um, but I'm pretty sure products made in Italy are supposed to be higher quality. I don't, I don't know if that's a real thing, but I feel like I've seen YouTube videos where people say usually in Europe it's better manufacturing and the factories are, I don't know, it's supposed to be better. It might not be, I don't fucking know, I don't make makeup for a living, but just so you know, made in Italy, made in the USA, okay? Um, as far as amount of product in each, now, um, I believe I watched, I try not to watch a lot of reviews on products that I'm planning on reviewing, but I'd heard a lot of buzz about Puffin's Wife. I wasn't subscribed to her, but I, I did subscribe, I think, and I watched her video, and she had mentioned the amount of product. So in this palette total, you get 12 grams and in the bigger ones it's 13.2 grams so she had said that's an amazing deal you're getting like one gram less of product for $55 so keep that in mind because people do think that's important if you are one of those like how much product do I get in this one versus that one that means it's a better value then that's gonna be important to you as far as shade selection and finishes, I did make some notes, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, there are six shades in this palette. Puffin's Wife had said there are no special shades, and I'm glad she said it like that because, for me, the reason I think these palettes are beyond worth it are these shades right here, these special shades. They are like intensely duochrome, just like the coolest formula you've never seen before. 
These shades right here, the six here, very basic, whatever. But these special shades, oh my gosh, it's unreal. So the reason I would tell somebody to buy this palette is those shades. And the fact that they didn't put them in this palette really makes me sad because a lot of people wanted a mini palette because they wanted to see what like Pat McGrath was about, if it was worth the hype. So if you want to see something that's like going to blow your mind, I would pass on this palette. I would save up for the bigger one because this is not like why I would recommend buying Pat McGrath. These are like any other shadows you could find anywhere. If you ask me, now this is my opinion, so you're not allowed to get mad. But the other ones, those special shades in that $129.25 whatever dollar palette is what makes Pat McGrath Labs special to me. So I just want you guys to know that. So here are the shades. And this is Pale Fire, which is a peachy pink duochrome. Now this is my favorite shade in the palette. It has an awesome freaking shift to it. The only thing is, it's not very visible when you put it on your eyeballs. It looks great in the inner corner, but when you put it on your eyes, it just looks peachy. I thought this shade worked best when you foiled it, but again, once you foil it, it really takes away the duochrominess of it, and it's just not my favorite palette. I mean, that's my favorite shade in the palette, but this palette was very disappointing to me, in case you guys haven't figured it out. This is Purple Rain. It is a vivid purple sheen, and now just a regular purple foil. Gold Nectar, not my favorite gold. It's very crumbly. As you can see, this palette is a mess. It's very crum crumbly, very cakey. Like when you swatch it, it's like very, it's not like buttery. It's not, it's not smooth. I don't, I don't love this formula. So that is Gold Nectar. And basically this is described as a peachy gold metallic. Then we have Paranormal, which is the only matte shadow in this palette and paranormal is described as, as a deep plum suede and honestly i wish they had included a different matte in this palette only because this definitely makes the palette more smoky there is no lighter blending shade today i actually used my viseart neutral mattes palette in my crease just to kind of lighten it up because i had done some looks with Paranormal in the crease and I thought it looked more like a dark smoky eye. It was very dramatic for the daytime so I wasn't loving it. Then we have Rosé Risqué and this is a, described as an ultra pink satin. Now when I hear the words ultra pink, I feel like it's gonna be ultra pink, like ultra pigmented, bam, in your face kind of pink and I swear it doesn't look as vibrant when you put it on your eyes. It could be any other pink in the world. Like, there's no way you would think, like, oh my gosh, that's Pat McGrath, you know? And I feel like that's what I expect from a rose palette. You know, the name of the palette is freaking rose, and I just feel like it's such a letdown. And then the last shade, which is Euphoria, is actually the shade I have on my lids today because I was really curious. I know a lot of people were really, really excited for that shade. I thought it was just okay, and Euphoria is described as a pink plum frost. I just really only see plum in this shade. I don't really see pink, um, but I guess I can kind of see like a slight pinky hue. I don't know. Again, not that impressed by the shades. They just looked so much cooler in the marketing pieces, so eh, eh, you know what I mean? So those are the shades, and I just wanted to break them down for you. As far as, are, is this palette suitable for all skin tones? I guess I I would say in general, yeah. Um, I feel like it doesn't look as vibrant on me as it does some people with lighter skin, but I think that is why black-owned makeup brands exist, because sometimes tanner people just need more pigment in their shadows, and definitely feel like there's not enough in this to make that pink really pop on my skin. And I did try to foil these shadows too and I was really not impressed with how they foiled. It just turned into like a pasty hot mess. It didn't make it glide on smoothly. I felt like I was almost like spackling it onto my lids which is not a very pleasant experience. <laughs> okay, so shelf life on this is 12 months which I thought was interesting because the big palettes actually have a different shelf life. So there is a breakdown here on the back of the bigger palettes and 
Some of the shades in the bigger palette will last you 30 months and then the special shades will last you 18 months. So clearly there is a huge difference in the ingredients, in the quality of the two palettes. This palette is not the same as the big one. So if you're buying this thinking you're going to get the same Pat McGrath Labs experience as I have had with the bigger palettes, you're not. I just, you're not. I mean, this is a 12 month shelf life, all the shadows. These ones are going to last you longer and there's a reason. It's because the ingredients are different, which means the formula is different. So I think that's going to change your experience with them. As far as the shipping time so I ordered this on 3.8 and it did arrive on 3.12 which wasn't terrible I believe 3.8 was a Friday which is why I didn't get my package till 3.12 which is not a big deal I did check Pat McGrath does state on their website that they are cruelty free which I think is wonderful as far as application I do think you can use these wet or dry like I said I've foiled it with MAC Fix Plus and I've also used the Pat McGrath Labs palettes with the Too Faced glitter glue that's usually my weapon of choice when it comes to making my shadows last longer but again I, I just feel like this formula is very different from what I'm used to from Pat McGrath Wear time is great. Like I said, I've done my makeup now this morning and I'm filming this at night so it lasted really well. No problems there. I just wish it was more opaque and vibrant and looked like the swatches that you saw when they were promoting this palette. If you guys are curious to see swatches, I did do a little swatch party video. I will link it up in the cards for you guys to check out. And finally, would I recommend this palette to you guys? Uh, no, I would not recommend this palette to you guys. I feel like I've already kind of told you why. It's, I honestly sincerely believe that you're not going to get the same Pat McGrath experience with these palettes. Yes, you're going to get a really good deal. You're getting a lot of product for a lesser price, which is great. But I don't know. It just depends on what your makeup vibes are. For me, for me, uh, quantity isn't the most important thing. If I'm paying $125, I want it to feel satisfying. And I feel like I was satisfied with my decision to buy the big palettes. The middle, the little ones, I wasn't excited to begin with, but it's Pat McGrath. I'm very loyal to the brand and eyeshadow in general. So I bought her mini palette. Like I felt like I almost had to like convince myself to buy this palette, which was wrong of me. I shouldn't have even bought them because it, I wasn't feeling it. Anyway, I bought one because I love makeup and I was hugely let down because I had this amazing experience with her prior palettes. It's just like anything else in life. Like if you know something is great, for example, if you had a really, really great experience with Urban Decay and you pr purchase a different palette from them and it's not a great experience, you're like let down. That's how I feel and I think that's okay. I think it's definitely a personal choice for you guys if you want to buy this palette. If you have the bigger Pat McGrath palettes, I don't think you will be satisfied with this quality. But that's just my opinion. That's how I feel. If you feel differently, we can totally talk about it in the comments. But that's everything. I hope I covered it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to hop off this video. Um, but I do want to say a really quick thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for all the support. I really appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. I do upload every other day so you do get quite a bit of content from me. And yeah, so I hope you will consider subscribing and sharing this video with your friends. And I will catch you guys on the next one soon. Bye guys.